Right, we're back with you now, explaining just how to answer the phone, you know how these things are. So you can see that the tail is at this point now. The next, the next click will bring, bring the tail back to this point here. See the green line? Uh, the next cycle is another cyclic cut. That's reduced that diameter there by just one millimeter. And then another cut, another cut, another cut. Then that's a movement in now to this point here. The tool is the green line here. That's the cutting point right where the cursor is, where the arrow is. So the next, uh, the next click will bring it to do the radius, the radius cut. There you go. Then there's a small parallel portion. Then the then it comes to the taper cut, which is the next cut along. That's the taper, and the parallel portion after the taper. That's a movement out to the start of the radius. Because I cheated with the radius of the cut, I used one that had been previously entered to save me calculating the I's and the K's. So the next, the next click is the first part of the semicircular cut. See the tool path that's represented there. So the next one will continue that around on the same radius. Is that first one? There you go. Then we come out onto this diameter. There's a short 0.25 there to bring it onto the diameter. And it comes back to this point here. I think we're somewhere near the tool changing. So that's the 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 threading tool has just gone into here. It stopped at that point. So when I click again you you should see the thread form I guess. That's your thread. And the program. You can if you want. You can also view the program. So that you can view, you can view the lines of the program as it's running. So, pity I can't slow it down a little bit more. <coughs> You'd be able to see more clearly what's going on. But that's Mike's free interface. This is version 1.6.3. And it's this is I'm using it in the Compact 5 CNC Mark IV version. Uh, you can go into the setting modes to machine so that you can set it for the Mark II or the Mark IV. Or you can use it for the F1 CNC milling machine. The communications, you enable it and you can use either one or, or two depending on how many uh, serial ports you've got on your computer. If you've got four it will recognize four and give you the, the capacity, the uh, option to uh, use any of the four. Uh, the units that you're working in could be millimetres or inch. You can delete when you work when you're doing the program without any confirmation. You can change the colours of incremental programming and the colour of absolute programming. You need to have a differential here so that uh, you always know. And I always use red for absolute. That's a very useful program. Anybody with a Compact 5 should be using this unless they've got something they think that's better. But I haven't found anything better. Not, a, not at such low cost anyway. Well that's all for the moment unless uh, but we can show, we can show you this move loading it to the machine. So we've got the machine switched on 
but at the moment it's in hand operation. I'll switch it to CNC operation. <coughs> I'll move into the G code to the G code column with the cursor. I'll enter 66. So it's G66 entered. Press input once. Press input again. Now it's asking, it's telling me it's now going to load the program. So I need to tell I need to tell the MFI to send the program to the machine. So all I need to do is click the transmit button. And you'll see that the program line is going down. And you'll see that on the screen of the MCO video screen, display screen, program is being loaded. Now that's transferring all the information from the columns of that program into the machine, ready to run. And it, this is the same program, I think I said it earlier, but it's the same program that's operated in Tutor 1. So if you want an idea of what the program does, you can check it in uh, Program 1. There you see it's loaded in. If you need to uh, make any changes to that program once it's loaded into the into the machine, you, you can make changes. It's not a problem. You can go from from the CNC mode back into hand operation to move the tool around to set the tool to the starting point of the program. You can adjust these position tool positions without any problem. And then you can go back to your CNC program. And the only thing that's happened now is you just lost the readings from the digital display that were being shown when you were in the manual mode. So when you go back to manual mode X and Z will be showing at zero. It's not a problem. If you run the program I'll take the tool out so we don't have a crash. I'll leave the spindle switch to there. If I run the program and stop it for any reason That was me pressing the wrong buttons. Sorry about that. Right, I've just pressed the input and forward buttons, which halts the program. It holds it. You can see it's telling us hold in N03, which is holding it in line 03. Although the cursor is showing it at 04, it's the program is being held in 03. So I can go out of the program now into manual mode. I can adjust the, I can take some depth of cut off, I can move the traverse there, I've moved the tool away from the work, made some adjustments to suit the reading, we we'll go back into CNC mode and it's telling me it's held in N03, so I need to, with the forward cursor, move the, move the cursor down to line 3, and press the start button, <coughs> and it picks the program up at the point where it was stopped. That's a good feature. It's now held in M00 of the program, which if you remember was the <coughs> excuse me, was the point at which I moved the tail stock up with the running center, the live center, and put it into the work and to give it the tail center support. 
If you want to see this program running right through completely, you can uh, view it on 2 Tool 1. Thanks for watching. Mike's free interface. That's all. Thanks for watching.